Campbell, the travelling cat. Snow was beginning to fall as the little cat stopped at the baker's doorway. Delicious smells tickled his nostrils. Inside, everything was warm and bright, and he gazed in wistfully. His paws were sore, and he was very tired from walking all day. The baker, a big jolly man, turned and saw his visitor. Oh, who have we got here, then? He bent over and stroked the cat gently. Why, you're shivering. Come right in, and we'll find you some milk. The cat limped over to the warm oven and curled up beside it. The baker's twin children, Carl and Paula, ran off at once to fetch the milk. Campbell lapped it up gratefully. It tasted very good. Paula picked up the little cat and cuddled him. What's your name? Campbell, said the cat proudly, and he was very surprised when all three burst out laughing. Do you come from Scotland, then? grinned the baker. Aye, and I walked all the way. Why? asked Carl. I'm looking for a new home. My family went off to Australia and left me behind. Paula hugged him. Never mind, you can stay with us, can't he, Daddy? The baker rubbed his stubbly chin. Only if he earns his keep. There are at least fifty mice in my cellar. I want them all caught, and quickly. Campbell was dismayed. Because he had flat feet, he could not run very far, so he had no hope of ever catching the mice. Anyway, he quite liked mice. Still, he liked his new home too. So he would have to try. The baker showed Campbell the long wooden slope which led to the cellar. As he padded down, he heard scuffles and a lot of small noises like squeaky pencils. Who are you? said a sudden voice. Campbell looked up, startled. A grey mouse with enormous ears was grinning down at him from the top of a bulging sack of flour. I'm a... I'm Campbell. I'm Jiggs, said the mouse. He jerked his head. And this is Musto. A skinny, cross-eyed mouse with long whiskers popped up and stared at Campbell, who nodded to both of them. "'What are you doing here?' asked Jiggs, knowing the answer very well. Campbell shuffled his feet. Mm, "'I've been sent to... to chase you out!' Jiggs grinned. "'You'll never do it! <laughs> We've been here too long! Besides, there's only one of you, and there's fifty-two of us!' fifty three added Musto. Jiggs turned to him. "'What?' Oh, oh yes, little bouncer. Have some cheese, Campbell. Jiggs pushed a piece off the sack, and it landed on Campbell's head. It was hard and stale, but he gnawed at it bravely. By the time he had finished, fifty-three pairs of bright eyes were watching him. Thanks, he started to clean his whiskers. You're welcome, grinned Jiggs. Campbell did not know what to do next. Even if he did catch one mouse, what would he do with it? He needed time to think. He stomped off, up the slope, and sat in the hallway. The sound of tittering laughter drifted up from the cellar. Campbell knew that he could not kill one mouse, let alone fifty-three. Nope, his only hope was to trick the mice into leaving the cellar. But how? He looked around the hall and saw something that gave him an idea. Carl had left one of his roller skates behind. Campbell pushed it to the top of the slope and climbed on. With one paw on the floor, he pushed off and whizzed down the slope, whooping, A Campbell! A Campbell! The noisy clatter of wheels startled the mice. When Campbell reached the bottom, he leaned to the left to turn the skate onto the cellar floor. Dozens of mice streamed past him to escape up the slope. But Campbell was in trouble. He was going so fast now that he could not stop. And he was heading straight for a huge sack. With a meow of alarm, he hit it. The sack burst, 
showering him with flour, and the last thing he heard before he was buried under a white avalanche was the sound of jigs laughing. It took Campbell ages to dig himself out. Shaking his head to get the flour out of his eyes and ears, he could see fifty-three pairs of eyes watching him. The escaping mice had been frightened by the baker's loud shouts above and had scuttled back to the safety of the cellar. Jiggs and Musto helped Campbell to brush off the flour. "'Better give up now before you hurt yourself,' advised Jiggs. "'We were just going to have a cheese party before you arrived. Come and join us, a sort of cat of honour, if you like.' Feeling foolish, Campbell agreed. Jiggs waved a paw, and four of the smaller mice staggered up to Campbell, carrying a large piece of cheese. "'How do you manage to get so much?' asked Campbell, nibbling the cheese. "'Easy,' said Jiggs. "'We take it out of the traps. I'll show you. Musto! Freddy! Burgess! He clipped his fingers, and the three mice stood on one end of a trap. Jiggs jumped quickly on and off the other end. The cheese flew up in the air and was neatly caught by Jiggs. "'There's fifty-three traps down here, one for each of us,' said Jiggs. "'That keeps us in cheese for a week.' The baker was very disappointed with Campbell. "'When I heard all that noise, I thought you'd got them,' he frowned. "'I'll give you just one more day. "'If you haven't got rid of them by then, you'll have to go.' Miserably, Campbell slunk outside. He walked around the cobble town all night, trying to think of another plan. Outside the big fancy house of the Duke, people were carrying out luggage to the oldest car Campbell had ever seen. In front of it stood a van with the back doors open. It was full of food. Campbell peered in. The Duke's off to Scotland for Christmas, the house cat told Campbell. He always takes his food with him. Doesn't trust them to feed him properly up there. What time's he leaving? Six o'clock sharp. Suddenly, Campbell knew what he was going to do. He looked up at the town clock. He had twenty minutes to make his plan work. Jumping into the food van, he snatched a hunk of cheese and raced back to the baker's cellar with it in his mouth. All the mice crowded round him, sniffing. Is that for us? exclaimed Jiggs feeling the lovely, moist cheese. "'There's lots more,' panted Campbell. "'But I can't carry it. It's in a van across the street. "'The driver is at the Duke's house, but we'll have to be quick. "'If we all go, we can carry everything in one journey. Come on!' Whiskers twitching, the mice all streamed after him. They did not need Campbell to tell them which way to go. Their noses led them. "'I'll keep watch,' whispered Campbell as they jumped into the van. Chattering and squeaking, the mice could not resist tasting the cheese right away. Some even jumped in under the noses of the two footmen bringing the last of the food. Campbell looked at the town clock. It was six o'clock. He dodged quickly out of sight as the footmen slammed the doors of the van and locked them tight. Smiling, Campbell walked quietly back to the baker's house. An hour later, when the family came down for breakfast, they found an empty cellar. Campbell was sitting in the hall, cleaning his paws. "'You clever cat!' exclaimed Paula, picking up Campbell and hugging him. The baker was delighted. "'I never thought you'd do it!' he beamed. That deserves an extra saucer of milk. Campbell was really happy. He might be small and flat-footed, but he had dealt with fifty-three mice. Campbell padded into the cellar to look around. He listened smugly to the silence. Then he heard a tiny laugh, just like a squeaky pencil, and looked up. There, on the top of the biggest sack of flour, sat a grey mouse with enormous ears. It was Jiggs.